Tony Bellew suggested that the scales for the David Hay rematch weigh-in were not accurate. He said this in his uh, interview with Sky Sports shortly after stepping off the scales. He implied that the scales were weighing heavier than they should be by a few pounds. Now, this is possible. And I guess it would maybe exonerate me a little bit if it was true, because I thought that David Hay looked lighter than 220 in the lead up to this fight. So it's possible the scales were out. But if the scales were really out, then wouldn't several of the lighter weight fighters who weighed in have been over the weight limit? Because this is a heavyweight fight between... David Hay and Tony Bellew. So there's no weight limit. They don't have to worry about that. But the lighter weight guys, if those scales were off, loads of them would have been going overweight, right? So that would lead me to believe that maybe the scales were not off. Now, another thing which some people are talking about is the fact that David Hay had jogging bottoms on or shorts or something, or maybe shoes. I'm not sure. I haven't checked. This is what people are telling me. The same, he had like tracksuit bottoms and shoes or shorts and shoes or something like that. And those would have added a few extra pounds to his weight. Again, that's possible. If he was wearing some heavy jogging bottoms and shoes, it could have added two or three extra pounds. And maybe he does only weigh 217. And there are some people suggesting that maybe David Hay deliberately came with shoes and whatever jogging bottoms on if he was wearing those i haven't checked but some people are suggesting that he deliberately did it to try and throw tony bellew off because tony bellew had said previously that he will know how this fight is going to go when he sees david hay on the scales and knows what weight he's come in at so perhaps david hay is attempting some misdirection and psychological games here by making bellew think he's heavier than he really is and Potentially, that could affect Tony Bellew's approach in the fight. I don't know if this is the case. I'm just putting out what people are saying. I'm just relaying information that other people are suggesting. And another theory that some people are putting out there is that there could be some corruption going on here because the bookies have been taking bets on what Tony Bellew and David Hay we're going to weigh in at, you know, if Tony Bellew was going to weigh over a certain amount, or if David Hay was going to weigh over a certain amount, bookies have been taking bets on this. And there are people out there suggesting that there could be some collusion going on, you know, whereby uh, the scales were deliberately tampered with for not for the previous fighters, but specifically for David Hay and Bellew. So between, you know, whenever the last uh, fighters weighed in on on the undercard and between uh, and when Hay and Bellew stepped on the scales, there was some tampering of the scales to make them heavier than they really are. So certain people could win money from the bookies on their bets. Again, I am not saying this is the case. I'm just telling you what is out there in the world of the boxing fans. These are the things they're suggesting. I have no idea. I have no knowledge about any of this kind of stuff. You make of it what you will, all right? So, and when I say no knowledge, I mean no knowledge of this kind of stuff with regards to this fight. Stuff like this has gone on throughout boxing history and, you know, the past, no question about it. But for this fight, I've got no knowledge about whether any of this is valid, okay? So, yeah, let me know what you think. Now, does any of this even matter? Will it affect the fight? That's the bottom line. Even at 220 pounds, if David Hay really does weigh that, you know, potentially he's a bit lighter. But even at 220, I'm still picking David Hay to win. I think now I could be wrong here. You know, maybe Tony Bellew pulls it off again. Maybe David Hay gets injured again. Maybe Hay's way more over the hill than I realize. But looking at the first fight, and I've watched it several times. Again, this week, Sky Sports have put it up on their YouTube channel. If you haven't seen it uh, recently, I suggest you go watch it. 
watching the first fight again, any of you who want to go and watch it, I recommend that you watch the 10th round specifically, okay? The fight ends in the 11th. Maybe maybe I'm getting it confused and it was a 9th rather than a 10th, but from memory, the fight ends in the 11th, right? The penultimate round for, you know, the, the round before the fight ends, David Hay actually wins that round. And he wins it quite clearly. I don't know what the hell the Sky team are talking about when they're watching that round, but I implore all of you to go and watch the penultimate round of Hey Bell U2 and try and tell me that David Hay didn't clearly win that round. He lands cleaner punches, better punches. He avoids getting hit clean for the most part. And all of this is done when David Hay is on one leg. A one-legged, tired, far too heavy David Hay, who underestimated his opponent, manages to win the 10th round on one leg against Tony Bellew. So what I'm telling you is, people, in my view, are overestimating Tony Bellew's boxing skills. Tony Bellew has decent boxing skills, but nothing to write home about. He's not an elite, uh, he doesn't have elite boxing skills, right? You can say he's an elite cruiserweight. He's certainly not an elite heavyweight, but part of what makes Tony Bellew an elite cruiserweight or a top level cruiserweight, at least if you don't want to use the word elite, is his all round game. It's not just that he's got decent boxing skills. It's also that he's tough. He's got heart. He's quite versatile. He can come forward. He can box on the back foot. He can do different things. Yeah? Versatility combined with heart and toughness are what have led to Tony Bellew being as successful as he has been in his career. But don't mistake this guy for some type of, you know, cruiserweight slash heavyweight Bernard Hopkins. He's not that. He is not some type of boxing master. And... Watching the 10th round of the first fight should confirm that to you. This guy is not all you guys are making him out to be in terms of his boxing skills. Yeah? He's got shorter arms than David Hay. If David Hay keeps this fight at long range as I expect him to, I think he's going to be the one picking up the rounds. Yeah? And yes, I'm picking David Hay to win by knockout. But that's not to say that I don't think David Hay can... Uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm picking David Hay to win on points. Okay? Rewind. Let me remix that. I'm picking David Hay to win on points. Let me make that very clear. Now, that's not to say David Hay can't win by knockout. He can win by knockout. He might win by knockout. The reason I'm picking him on points is because I think he's going to play it safe. And I also think Bellew going to play it safe. For different reasons. I think Hay might play it safe because he's worried about getting injured again. Because if he goes for the KO, if he starts winging heavy shots, it's going to increase the chances of him picking up another injury or re-injuring something. Whereas if he plays it safe and keeps it long and tries to counter punch, he could still get a knockout that way, but it depends on how ambitious Tony Bellew is. Yeah. So I'm expecting David Hay to, you know, stick his jab out there and kind of fight in a similar fashion to how George Groves did against Chris Eubank Jr. He won't necessarily be going backwards all the time, but he'll be counter punching basically. He'll be waiting for Tony Bellew to make the first move and letting Bellew lead off and counter him. Yeah. And when Bellew is not leading off, I expect David Hay to be touching Bellew with a jab and picking up the slow rounds that way. I don't expect him to just be going all out at Bellew. You know, I mean, he, he might, but I'm not expecting that. And so, so I think Hay might play it safe because he's worried about injuring himself and he, and he probably thinks he can win the fight playing it safe, jabbing and counter-punching. And Tony Bellew, I think, might play it safe because he played it safe in the first fight because he's... Worried about David Hay's power. Tony Bellew's under no illusions that if David Hay catches him clean, he's going down. He said this many times. David Hay, on the other hand, he doesn't really respect Bellew's power. Yeah? 
So I, I expect them to both play it safe, but for different reasons. If David Hay don't play it safe, and if he goes out there and attacks Bellew, then yeah, he may well knock Bellew out. Man, he could knock Bellew out early if he lands the right shot early, you know, early in the fight. But it's whether he's going to take that gamble or not. I'm just not sure he's going to take that kind of gamble. I don't see why he would, because it backfired in the first fight. I know David Hay is a gambling kind of guy. <laughs> you know, David Hay is a risk taker. He's been that way throughout all his career. It's only really the Klitschko fight where he neglected to take risks. Um, but to be fair, in the Klitschko fight, he was being held so much when he, whenever he got remotely close that it limited his opportunity to take any risks too, to be completely fair to him. But, you know, that fight aside, Hay's always been a risk taker in terms of in the ring. I'm not talking about the fights he's picked because he's actually picked his fights very carefully. But in the ring, he's always been a risk taker, you know. And and also people are talking about the pressure in the build up to this fight. David Hay loves pressure. David Hay is one of those guys who actually thrives on pressure. This is not a Eubank Jr. or some of these other guys who crumble at the top level. David Hay gets a buzz. He gets a kick out of pressure. And I actually think that losing the first Bellew fight has given him the kick up the backside. It's given him the extra motivation that he needed. David Hay likes to feel like he's in danger. He's somebody who actually enjoys that feeling of danger, pressure. You know, that's the kind of character he is. And it actually brings the best out of him when he feels he's in danger. So I'm not expecting to see a prime David Hay here. I think prime David Hay is gone and will never return. I am expecting to see a better David Hay than the first fight. And I'm expecting him to win. Yeah, it could be by knockout, but I'm going to play it safe because I think Hay's going to play it safe and say he wins on points. Um, if Bellew wins, then boy, you know, we have to see the nature of his victory. Maybe he'll win even more convincingly. Maybe he'll once again prove me wrong because he's proved me wrong in the pot. He's proved so many people wrong. This is why you have to respect Tony Bellew because he's such an overachiever. Time and time again, Bellew has beat the odds. To be fair, though, when he fought Alunga Makabu, I wasn't surprised that he beat Makabu. Uh, there were a lot of people who were surprised. I wasn't surprised because I'd seen Makabu against uh, to be so Machunu. And Makabu was getting lit up like a Christmas tree in the Machunu fight. I wasn't impressed by Makabu in that Machunu fight. And I was saying that in the lead up to Bellew versus Makabu. I was saying this is a 50-50, I think I might have been saying at the time. I, I wasn't one of these people saying Bellew's going to get chinned. You know? uh, but still, I certainly didn't expect Tony Bellew to beat David Hay the first time around. And to be honest with you, I didn't really expect him to become a world champion at Cruiserweight. You know, even though he did it against Makabu and I wasn't surprised by that, by that particular fight, if you'd asked me when he was a light heavyweight after he lost to Stevenson, whether he'd become a world champion at Cruiserweight, I would have predicted no. But then again, I couldn't have predicted that he would have got into a situation against a fellow contender where they were fighting for a vacant belt. So anyway, <laughs> all that aside... Let me know your final thoughts on this David Hay, Tony Bellew rematch. How do you think it's going to go? You think Bellew is going to do it again? Will it be repeat or revenge? Drop it all in the comment section below, people. It's happening. I'm out.